All right, team, I can see people coming in. We're just going to give it a minute or two to get uh, to get everybody into the room, and then we'll get going. So let's just give it a minute or two. I'll just repeat myself one more time. It's about a minute before the hour, so we're going to give it a couple of minutes for folks to get in, team. Uh, as you're joining, I'm seeing the uh, the attendees number grow here. So just uh, just give it a minute or two, and then we'll get things kicked off. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining. Okay, we're just getting to the top of the hour. Um, so I think we'll get things kicked off here as people are continue to join, but we'll get started. Uh, welcome to our call, everybody, uh, partners and everybody. Thank you for joining. I know that it's uh, it's the beginning of the year. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, I'm calling in here from the rainy desert of Arizona. Um, I'm uh, For those of you that may or may not know me, Jeff Anderson, I'm a vendor business executive here for TD Cynix. Uh, leading the brand for all things IBM public sector. Um, we're excited to have this call today. We've had a lot of conversations with partners and, and the partner community saying, you know, sometimes there's there's certain things that happen as it pertains to deal registration where there's different different variables, nuances that maybe delay the process a little bit, maybe get a little frustrating. So our goal in the call today is to is to kind of go through things, take you through that process step by step um, to make sure that you have everything that you need uh, in terms of, of getting those in efficiently you know, and getting your getting your deal registrations out there uh, early and often, right? Today we have uh, Ryan Sullivan, our vendor uh, development manager, is going to lead the call today. He is uh, he is our process genius. He's our go-to guy uh, for all things like this. A lot of you partners have probably worked with him in the past. He's going to take us through, you know, what the deal registration process looks like. And then we also have Doreen Dombrowski, who is the IBM uh, government ecosystem lead for software, whom a lot of you probably worked with uh, in the past. But we also have Judy Simcock, the IBM Federal Channels Manager for Systems Online. So we're gonna be covering both um, things for software and hardware throughout the call. What I would ask is that you keep your questions. We, we do have a Q&A section in the side. So if you have a question as we're going along, that panel of people along with a few others are going to be monitoring it and, uh, and answering those as we go. And then when Ryan's done kind of with his presentation, we're gonna review some of those questions and then open up you know, that Q&A section. You won't be able to speak out, but we'll, we'll want you to type in any questions that you have in the Q&A. We'll review those and we'll provide those answers. Anything we can't answer uh, at that time, we'll make sure um, to get back with you on. And then a, a few days from now, we're going to send out a recording. We are recording this uh, right now, so we'll send out this recording after the fact. And then what we want to do is put it uh, somewhere in a receptacle where you could maybe get it um, at a, uh, a at an as-needed basis, right? Um, so with that, I, uh, I'm gonna. We got a lot of great content to get into. I want to send it over to the uh, to the awesomeness of Ryan Sullivan to take us through why we're here today. Ryan, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Take us into it, man. Thanks so much. Oh, all righty. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the kind words. I'll be sure to get your uh, your Venmo for all the kind things that you said about me. Thanks. Um, well, hi everyone. Ryan Sullivan here. Uh, I handle the activation of business partners here at TD Cynix on the IBM Business Unit. And today, like Jeff said, we're going to get into the uh, wonderful world of deal registration, specifically uh, when you're working with a government-owned entity. So I'm going to go ahead and share my slides, and we will jump right in. All righty. So uh, we are going to walk through it step by step. We're also going to send you out this slide deck after the webinar today so that you have it in your hip pocket whenever you go in uh, to work on this. All while knowing that if you need help, just reach out to us. We are here for you to make sure that you get these deal regs in right the first time. That is everyone's goal. Okay. So the first place you're going to go to is right here in this link. It'll be the IBM partner portal. All right. The landing page looks like this. Okay. One of the things to note is that in order to register deals uh, for your company, 
you must be in your IBM uh, partner portal uh, employee list for your business. And then you also need to have deal registration access. Okay. There is one person at the company that can grant you uh, approval to join the portal and that access. And that is your APA, your authorized profile administrator. Okay. If you need that invite to join and need that uh, subsequent level of access, you can ask your APA. Some partners don't know who that APA is. Uh, there's two routes you can go. You can reach out to us at uh, TD Cynics. You can reach out to IBM through a uh, IBM partner support ticket, uh, and they'll let you know who that person is. They'll actually reach out to that individual and have them contact you. So it's a, a good process they have. All right. So on the left hand side, you'll see the section for deals. You'll click that drop down and you'll click on deal registration. Pretty straightforward there. You're going to land at a portal that looks like this. OK, you are going to know that you have deal registration access if this first section here for business partner company is auto filled with your business's name in there. As you see, the screenshot I took was for us at TD Cynics. So it says our legacy name of AVT Technology Solutions. If this part is blank, that's how you know you don't have a, a deal registration access. And you want to go ahead and reach out to your APA to get said access in the portal. All right. Moving down the line to solution name. So this is where you just put in a title for your deal regs. This is completely up to you as the reseller. Um, it's just however you and your company, whether you have a naming convention or maybe you don't, it's just however you want to go ahead and organize yourself. Because when you get in and start racking up your deal registrations, you'll have an opportunities list where they all live and it'll help you keep it organized. If, you know, for example, I recommend putting who your end user's name is, a hyphen, and then input the product it is you're selling. You can never really go wrong with that process. Um, and then as we move on, you'll put in the solution description, okay? This is just a couple sentences right up of what you're providing the customer, what problem you're solving, what product you're selling. It does not have to be an essay. I see a lot of partners do that. You're kind of just wasting your time there. Uh, it's just a quick little blurb as to what you are providing the customer, okay? Ryan, this is Judy. Can yeah. I just add one thing to that? Absolutely. Um, we're going to talk later about CMRs and we'll get into it a little bit more. But in the solution description, if you know the two CMRs that you plan to use for your hardware registration, we suggest you name them here. You say preferred CMRs and then you put the two CMR numbers. It will help um, us later on and, and you'll know why as we get further into it. The, the other thing I would just mention is I would stress the why in this solution description. Like, why are you selling this? Not just what are you selling? Because it, you know, it tells us really what, what customer needs you're filling. I think that's an important piece versus just listing the configuration that you're gonna that you're gonna bid. Okay, that's it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Judy. All right, so next slide here. This is kind of my first uh, stop sign, if you want to call it, for deal registration. There's a couple points in this process where you want to stop and make sure you get some information spot on, right? A lot of this is self-explanatory, right? As you look ahead, you'll see currency. Okay, that's an easy one. Uh, estimated close date, easy one. But there's about three stop signs throughout deal regs that we're going to cover today that you want to pause, make sure you get the right info. So you'll click on search for customer, all right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to click, what would you like to search by? So you can search by a CMR number, you can search by a customer name and address, and you can search by a customer site ID. These are not all three created equal, okay? Um, I would say if you're working uh, you know, with a software product, the very best option would be that site ID. You can also do CMR number. Uh, hardware accepts the CMR numbers as well, as Judy had mentioned. Um, but those are the two best. They're kind of uh, 1A and 1B. Um, searching by customer name and address, I tell partners is almost like a last resort. Maybe you're in a time crunch. Maybe you don't have time to grab that CMR number or site ID because you can get it from us at TD Cynics or from IBM. You just got to give them the legal name and address of your end user and they'll look it up and provide you that data. All right. But you can search by customer name and address, but here's the issue with it. If you search uh, for a company and they have a, you use their headquarters address that you're going to sell to, okay? Maybe that headquarters address has a logis logistics division. Maybe they have a data management division and a cybersecurity division. Well, if all three of those divisions have bought IBM in the past, that's going to be three separate site IDs, all with the same name and address. 
So I see it time and time again, a partner will put in their, uh, their search via uh, name and address here, and they'll get 15 options for the exact same name and address location. And they don't know which one to pick. And if they're not careful, they'll pick the wrong option. And now you have an opportunity registered for the different customer than you're actually selling to. And if you go through with that order, uh, you actually won't get the incentives on the back end because you sold to a completely different customer site ID than you actually registered to. OK, so you want to make sure that that part is accurate. And again, you can reach out to us at TD Cynics. You can contact anyone on our team and just say, hey, I'm about to go register a deal. I'm going to need a site ID or a CMR number. Here is my customer's legal name. Here is my customer's full address. And then if you have any extra information, maybe who it is at the customer you're working with, right, their POC information. If there's a suite number or a building number, all of that helps us find the right CMR or site ID for you. And our team will grab that info and send it back over to you. And now you're armed to go in and do your deal reg. Okay. Awesome. Ryan. Um, yes. Is it time for me to jump in with a couple more comments here? Sure. <laughs> go for yeah. it. Um, I just, for federal, I just want to really stress, for federal hardware, I want to stress what you said, that um, it is definitely best to, to use CMR numbers. And I would say it is best to get those CMR numbers from us in advance before you go in to do your deal registration. If you simply select things from the tool, you will often we will end up with problems downstream. So I would say it's very important to get good CMRs in advance. And I'll go further to define a good CMR for federal. A good CMR for federal names the federal agency. If there is an integrator involved, it also names the integrator. It does not just name the integrator. We always need to know who the federal agency is that the integrator is working with. So we ask for a format such as Air Force care of Lockheed, you know, if you're working through Lockheed to the Air Force. It's really important, um, you know, and I can't stress it enough for our process. We, we have a detailed document that talks to how to name federal customers, how to set up customer numbers for federal customers. We'll get you that link, you know, later on. And I would just encourage you to, uh, to look at those details and make sure you're naming the customer properly and using good CMRs. Awesome. And as you see in my note here, there is a way to create the CMR as a business partner. Um, that is another level of access that the APA has to grant you in the portal. It's called BP Create CMR. OK, so they can do that at the same time they give you deal reg access. Now, note the end here, it says for federal part uh, customers, only IBM can create that CMR. OK. All right. Moving on. So as you see here, uh, in our example, the business partner was savvy. They had the right site ID. See how it pulls up an option of one of one. Super easy, super efficient. They'll just click that bubble and click select customer. Next, this is where you'll see if it's listed in IBM's portal uh, as a government owned entity. It'll say yes or no here. I just blacked out some of that sensitive data. So I'm not sharing that with everyone on the planet. OK, now, if it's a GOE, yes. Ryan, I'm sorry, it's Judy again. Okay. Back to the prior chart. Um, there will be times, especially with hardware CMRs, that when you have those, your, your good CMRs that you know properly represent your customer, the tool will not find them and accept them. And, and in that case, we just ask you pick something close, similar name, similar location. And then remember what I said earlier, if you tell us the CMRs that are your good CMRs in your solution description or in the chatter in your opportunity, we will get the CMRs replaced so that your good CMRs are reflected in the record. And we can do that within 24 hours of when you submit your registration. So that's how to handle it if you don't find your CMR in the tool, which does happen frequently on hardware registrations. Uh, very quickly, software is much easier, folks. <laughs> it's really best to write site number where possible. And I, that's where IBM can come in to assist you. Please check with us prior to submitting and we can get work to get you a valid CMR or site number and or CMR if TD Cynics is not able. And that's for Fed and SLED. Awesome. All righty. Well, thank you, Judy and Doreen. Um, this is the section, again, where you'll see if it is listed as GOE. If it is on slide nine, and again, you guys are all going to get this document, 
Um, on slide nine, it'll go over some of the additional steps that are required for that GOE approval, which uh, I believe you know most of you have probably seen. So we'll get into that here in a second. So uh, currently, U.S. dollar will auto-populate. If you're working with a different currency, you'd update it there. Estimated close date. So deal registrations are good for 180 days, but you can put in whatever estimated close date you believe. I mean, it's good to give yourself plenty of time uh, and push it out a little bit just to be safe. But again, these are good for 180 days. So um, regardless of that estimated close date. Now, these two boxes down here, I get a lot of questions about. This is where we get into, is this solution restricted? And was this solution provided uh, by your distributor? So the first box drastically limits our ability to help you uh, if there's issues with this deal reg. Really, it limits the opportunity and who can view it and work on it to just the IBM deal registration team. I recommend against checking that box uh, almost 99% of the time because, again, it just handcuffs us as a VAD and as majority of IBMers' ability to pull up information and help you out with the deal reg if needed. Um, this solution is provided by your distributor. So this is super helpful to help us track a lot of data, whether or not uh, if we're running a marketing campaign for you as at TD Cynix, um, if you got leads from said marketing campaign that we funded or set up for you, um, that's when you would check this box if it came from that campaign. All right, it just helps us track a lot of the data and making sure that we're keeping track of which leads came from where, okay? Once you're done with those two boxes, you'll go ahead and click next. All righty, so this section here is start, starts to get a little more granular. So this is asking if you're responding to an RFP or RFQ, right, a public tender. If you choose yes, it'll ask for the name and reference number. You just need to input that admin data there. Um, this next question is, are you selling exclusively IBM? Uh, yes or no there is what you'd put in. And then this is the next kind of stop sign that I talked about. And this is where it's selecting the activities you've, you've uh, completed with your customer. As you see, there's six options here and you must choose two of them in order to get an approval on your deal registration. Now, if your customer is GOE, all right, you're gonna have to choose your two options. And then after you submit your deal registration, you'll be directed to upload documentation proof that you've completed the two boxes that you check, okay? Now, most partners I work with can check the box for step one because it literally just says two-way communication. So that can be emails back and forth, an email chain you can take screenshots of or make a PDF and upload. They'll accept that, okay? Uh, showing that you've worked back and forth with the customer. One thing they will not accept is if you just upload a meeting invite uh, to the portal because they don't know that that meeting actually happened. Now, a good practice that the IBM deal regs team uh, has advised me on is complete your meeting, upload the screenshot of the meeting, and then upload a follow-up email that you send to the customer stating, you know, just recapping what the meeting was about. That proves that you've had that meeting and they'll accept that they've told me. Okay. So just, it adds a little layer into, you know, the evidence that you need to provide. Um, but in the case of this document review to get GOE deal regs approved, uh, the more, the better, right? You can make, put a bunch of documents onto a PDF, upload it, and the reviewer will look at it. What'll happen is when you submit this deal reg, it'll actually say deal registration not approved. That's okay. Go ahead and click submit. It'll give you an opportunity number and direct you to upload these documents, okay? When you upload the documents, the IBM deal registration team has 48 hours to review and either approve or deny, okay? If they deny, they will put a note in the chatter box within your opportunity, which is just a, a messaging uh, portal that they'll use. And they'll just ask for more documentation, explain what they're gonna need to give approval, okay? So make sure that as you work with your customers, you're just kind of logging your, your communications with them, any documents you think would help your case. Uh, and then you're taking note of which two boxes on this page here you're checking because that's what you're gonna have to prove uh, when you upload these documents, all righty? Awesome. All right, so kind of the third and final stop sign here, and this one doesn't get all that complicated, but as we start talking about uh, what product you're gonna choose. So when you click next, it'll take you to a screen that looks like this, and you're gonna type in and search for the deal registration group that you're going to uh, select. Deal registration organizes the products in this portal by groupings, so not by specific part numbers, 
okay? As you see here, it has a group for all of Maximo, right? And there's 682 associated products, meaning for this example, we were selling Maximo. You type in Max, uh, you'll choose Maximo, obviously, and you're covered for 682 different options underneath that Maximo umbrella. So they group things together. Uh, there are documents that we have uh, that we can share where it'll have the uh, the deal reg code by product and by part number so that you'll know. Kind of a good thing uh, to have on top of having the site ID or the CMR number before you show up to this portal. It's probably a good idea to have that deal registration code. Okay. If you don't have it, again, not the end of the world. You can work the tool here. Just know this. As you see, I typed in max, M-A-X, to put in Maximo. For whatever reason, it Maximo came up as the third item down. I don't know why. If you ask me, uh, in the perfect world, it would be the first option. So just make sure you check this whole list before you choose, okay? And sometimes there will also be options, whether it says software or software as a service with the same title. So make sure you check that piece too. Uh, but you want to make sure that you get this part right because the AI that determines the approval, right, uh, and make sure that someone else doesn't have the deal reg uh, before you, is it looks at the CMR site ID and what product is registered to that. And if those two are already filled for a customer, then it's gonna deny it every time because someone else already has deal reg. All righty. Brian, this is Judy again. Um, I just wanna you know, agree with you and stress that it really is best practice to go look at those deal reg product groups in advance and know what registration categories you need to register for the products that you're gonna sell. Um, we see a lot of errors, you know, on this on hardware and can get a little tricky on storage. And the one point I'd add is that for GOE deal regs specifically, you can't add a product group later. So if you don't get them all right at the beginning, you're going to have to do a new registration later yep. on. So it's really right. best to kind of research in advance and make sure you get everything you want registered. Correct. Thank you, Judy. Yes, you can choose multiple products at this section, but if your customer is GOE, the option to add an additional product to a registration, you know, a couple of days later does not exist for GOE customers. Okay. If it's a uh, private sector, you can do that. So just make sure, again, everyone's goal with deal regs is to do it right the first time uh, fast and efficiently, right? Because speed is everything, but you want to make sure you do it right. So once you choose the product, the AI will do a little spin. Again, if it's GOE, 100% of the time, it'll say deal registration not approved. That's just because you have to upload your documents and that requires the manual approval by the deal registration team. All right, in this case, we chose a private sector, so it approved it, but that's just to show you guys how the AI works, okay? Um, you're gonna go ahead and input your estimated sales value, okay? And estimated is the keyword. A lot of people spend forever trying to put in, you know, pull in the exact number. It does not need to be an exact, okay? And then you'll go ahead and click next. So from there, you'll be directed to review all of your information you input. All right. You want to make sure, again, the customer number or site ID is accurate and that you have the right one. You want to make sure that the product you chose is accurate and, and that you have the right one. Okay. And you want to make sure that you took note of the two sales action items you selected, because if it's GOE, you're going to have to prove that. Okay. Then you'll go ahead and click confirm solution. All right. And when you confirm solution, it'll then take you to the page where it directs you to upload your GOE documents. OK, and then it'll also give you your new opportunity number. OK, which is important that you give that off to your IBM rep when they create the bid. Same thing on our end. You want to make sure that that's on your TD Cynics quote, uh, because that's how IBM and TD Cynics are confirming that you're getting all of your discounts that you're due for having the deal reg. Now, um, Judy and Doreen, I, I'll let you guys speak to this, but there are times where even if it's a GOE customer, you won't get directed to upload your GOE documents. Um, if that Correct. is the case, go ahead and click on that new opportunity number. There's times where the portal does not require that level of uh, documentation upload. So what you'll do is you'll click on your opportunity number. It'll take you to what I call your opportunities homepage. It's just all the data that you just input about this opportunity. All you got to do, scroll down to the bottom. It'll say deal registration approved with a checkbox. Um, that's what I've seen. Sometimes the portal, uh, we jokingly say that it does us a favor and it bypasses the need for that documentation upload. 
and it'll uh, go ahead and do that auto approval. And you'll just check that that box there in the bottom of that page is, is checked. If you have any questions about it, just let us know. We're happy to help and make sure that you're navigating the portal correctly. Um, that's what I'm here for and the rest of my team as well. Ryan, um, yep. yeah, I will just add one thing. Um, so sometimes the portal will approve your registration without asking you for GOE docs. And as Ryan mentioned, it's kind of a random act of kindness from the from the portal or sometimes the customer number was miscoded and it doesn't show that it's GOE. So occasionally that will happen. But what what happens even more often is sometimes you will get a rejection and it does not ask you to upload your GOE documentation. And the reason for that is the tool sometimes thinks there's a duplicate, that there's another partner already approved. And in that case, you're going to want to request a deal registration review. If you know you've been working the opportunity, you're going to want to request a deal registration review and provide your GOE documentation at that time when you do your review request. So it's a little different way of getting your documentation into us. And I have seen partners confused because they don't see the request for GOE documentation. They just see that they're not approved and they're not clear on how they give us their documentation. And the answer is request a deal reg review and provide your documentation there. And that's, you have 48 hours to do that if you receive a denial. Good you only point. have 48 yeah. hours to submit for the deal reg review. Yep. And uh, if you need help with how to submit that deal reg review, you can reach out to us at TD Cynics. We're happy to help. Um, even myself, I'll hop on a call with you and walk you through the whole process of submitting it. It's actually very simple. You just need to know where to go in the portal to do so. Okay. Um, and just to recap, the big things are making sure that you have the right CMR or site ID number, um, use the customer name and address search as a last resort, um, making sure that you have selected your two sales action items and that you have the documentation to back it up. Um, and remember, just uploading a screenshot that you had a meeting does not work for IBM. They're going to want you to send some sort of follow-up email would suffice explaining what we talked about in the meeting, yada, yada, yada. That will work greatly. Um, a good example of that is, you know, maybe you choose the first box that says um, two-way communication, right? Showing that, and you upload that you showed you had a meeting. Well, in that follow-up email, you talk about not only did you have that meeting, but you gave a demonstration of the product or talk scope or anything like that. That actually meets another box down there that is for product demonstration. Uh, so then you got your two uh, boxes right there. So just how to kind of work that that program, making sure that you're getting all your ducks in a row for a GOE deal registration. Uh, and then lastly, ensuring that you have the right deal reg code or that you know the product type that you're going to be putting in for. Um, those are kind of the three main things that you want to have before you show up to the portal to do a deal reg. All right. So at this time, I'll end the slideshow and hand it back over to Jeff. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, Jeff, I will hand it back over to you, my friend. Thank you, Ryan. An awesome, awesome job. I mean, there's a lot of content there. Um, I've been watching, kind of monitoring the uh, the Q&A section, and I think we covered most of those questions. I see a little bit uh, still happening in the chat area. Um, Doreen, Debbie, did we get, or I'm sorry, Doreen and Judy, did we get to the, um, did we get to all the questions there? I have not typed any oh. answers in. <laughs> Um, I'll address and speak with Raj offline on what he's asking, Jeff. Okay, and then I see one in the more. In Q&A. From... Well, yeah. okay, so one of Raj's questions about is about the installed at CMR, I believe. The question is, um, how does he... I'm how looking at two, two questions, one about New York and New Jersey, and the other on deal reg for SLED. I think the one you're talking uh, there about. There was one was, on storage. Yeah. Yeah, there were. So there was a question about um, why does the storage require a deal registration, even if you don't get approved? You know, they want it wants an opportunity number. And um, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that is because e pricer maybe um, works better when there's an opportunity number. So I'm, I'm thinking that's the reason for that, Raj, although I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, regarding, in, you know, install at CMRs that get assigned and the differences between install at and, and 
direct or uh, sold to CMRs. That's really a hardware issue. And yes, we do see lots of scenarios where install at and sold to CMRs are not a perfect match for each other. The tool tries to find matches. It is not very good at it. And that is really why earlier in the presentation, I talked about the need to get two good CMRs up front and tell us what they are in your um, opportunity description or your solution description. And then we will, get, we will get those CMRs added to your record and get your record fixed so that it reflects the CMRs that you want um, because the tool doesn't always do a great job of finding the right ones. And that's for hardware and storage. Yes. <clears throat> And uh, Julie Lovett uh, asked a question. If deal regs does not go through and it needs to be closed out, what is the best way to do that? So good question. I get that a lot. People just want to organize their opportunities folder and get rid of, uh, you know, any any heavy waste there if there's an opportunity they lost. Um, there is an option in that deal registration homepage when you click on the opportunity number. You can there's a drop down there where you can say that the deal regs was one or that the opportunity is one, that the opportunity was lost. That does not actually get rid of that deal regs in the portal. If you're wanting to clean up your opportunities homepage, you'll need to grab a list of all the opportunities numbers that you want to get rid of. And uh, you can, what you can do is send it over to me at TD Cynics. Um, but I would then connect that list over to the deal registration team at IBM. And they actually go in manually and erase those. There's not an option for business partners to permanently delete opportunities out of their um, opportunity folder. Um, you have to go to the deal registration team and they'll go in and close those out. You just have to put in an email, hi, you know, wanting to get rid of, you know, X, Y, Z opportunity numbers. We no longer, you know, are working these cases and they'll go in within 48 hours and get rid of them. Okay. Cool. Thank you for that, Ryan. Yeah. It's, um, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's one more, Doreen, I don't know if you, well, and I don't know if we want to go over the margin sheet too, but is there any guarantee on minimum number of points we are guaranteed over anyone else that does not have deal reg? If you have deal reg, um, I'll just say that no one, no one should be getting what you're getting in terms of, uh, in terms of discounting and margin, right? Um, we do have a, a, a kind of general guidance um, as to what, you know, you would, you would, get on your perceived margin and whatnot, but um, nobody else would be getting that if you have the deal reg. So we can talk specifics to to what that looks like per opportunity. Um, and as you get your quoting back, we can have our team walk you through what that looks like and where you're seeing your discounts and, and why you're seeing those and what they align to. I'd like to do that kind of in a, in a, uh, in a, a per opportunity uh, aspect, if you would, because uh, th there are some variables that play into it, right? Uh, as you get it, but you'll, you'll be getting the best margin yeah. the best thing out there. If right? I can yeah. add a point yeah. out too, yeah. in the government space, it's very highly competitive. And some partners may, you know, their, their priorities or their plan might be to go very low on the margins. So you still have to bid somewhat smart if you have deal reg and the incentives uh, but just be conscientious that uh, in the government space of the competition, that's, but Jeff is right. It's, you're the only partner that's getting those incentives if you have the deal reg. And uh, some of those incentives you can't control as a business partner. Uh, they're IBM uh, determined uh, case by case, looking at who the customer is, what the product you're selling, yada, yada, yada. There's actually one that you can control 100% of the time if you're going to get it, and it's the proficiency incentive. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that as a business partner, um, you're putting yourself in a good position to get you know, the best margin. That's self-explanatory. The way you can control that 100% uh, is complete the proficiencies in IBM's Learning Hub. Somebody who's assigned to your uh, company profile has an IBM, log IBM ID and login that is tied to your company goes into the IBM Learning Hub, completes the proficiency course on the product that you are selling, and IBM will reward the business partner for having do that. They will literally pay you the incentive uh, for that proficiency incentive um, if you complete the course, okay? So there's a direct way that you can control or, or and it have an influence on the amount of margin you make on deals is complete those proficiency courses. You'll get an incentive for it. 
um, by just knocking out the online training. Um, Ryan, I will add one thing for hardware. For hardware, we do have the concept of a value seller market price discount and a value seller preferred price discount. Um, the preferred price discount is the one that you get with a deal reg. Um, right. There is a spread between those two numbers and the spread does vary depending on the hardware products, but that information is out there and available and your distributor can help you find it. If you're working a deal, you should be able to find those two numbers to get a sense of what we expect that spread to be. Okay. I'm looking through. Doreen, I see you addressing deal reds is expiring and notification to extend, but extending is not an option. So we have to create a new one. Is this a feature or a bug? I think you're answering that one, Doreen. So I'll wait for you to- Yeah, it's, it's that answer right there. I mean, you're just gonna knock out a new deal reg for it. Yeah. Like, it's, when it's, it's about to expire, too easy. You just go in, put in the same information, get yourself a new deal reg, good for 180 days. Yeah, Ryan, right. the one thing I would add, though, is because I've seen it, um, is it's a good idea to have some current documentation available. If you've been working a deal for six months and it's expiring, find some current documentation where you're still communicating Very. with the customer, the deal is still alive, et cetera. You will be asked for documentation when you resubmit. We just want to know you're still working it and the deal is still alive. And that's why we require a new deal, Reg, rather than just, you know, letting you extend your old one. Beautiful. Hey, Ryan, there's a question from Joy Brought. I think you'll, you may be the best person to answer that. Okay. Uh, would you mind reading off? I'm looking, I'm looking. It basically says out. this, uh, Ryan. It says, could you clarify again what we need to do in terms of supplying GOE sales docs when we submit a deal reg opportunity for a GOE customer that is approved at the time of deal reg submission, uh -huh. i.e. without supplying GOE sales docs. We have been told that the tool will approve a deal reg for a GOE customer when the BP satisfies certain criteria. Example given recently closed business under that same PPA site number. But it's again not clear what we need to do in terms of uploading the GOE docs because there's no provision inside the tool to upload these docs. Okay, so if I understand the question correctly, um, what you're going to do is the portal will direct you when you create a new deal registration. When you click submit, it'll give you an op option uh, to upload your GOE documents. Those two sales action items that you select is what you're going to need to upload. Um, I'm not tracking anything that if you recently sold to a site ID, it'll allow you to bypass GOE upload You know, on a, on a subsequent deal registration. From my understanding, it'll ask you for GOE documents every single time, um, unless there's the case where uh, every every so often, the portal will not direct you, and it'll go ahead and just approve your deal reg, like right. we talked about there at the end. And um, if you are approved without submitting sales documentation, you are approved. Correct. Other than the fact that if you get a deal reg review challenge, you don't need to submit the documentation. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. oh, and what she's getting at is maybe you have a deal reg. A competitor thinks they should have the deal regs and they do a deal registration challenge. Okay. At that time, the challenging partner will fill out a business justification. It's just a little pop up on the IBM portal and they'll upload documentation, you know, proving they've been working with the customer. IBM will then turn to you as the business partner of record asking for the exact same thing. They will review the evidence and make a determination. Okay. So that's what uh, she means by if you have a maybe. The portal, like we said, it's a case where it doesn't direct you to upload your GOE docs. Therefore, it's it's been approved, right? You'll look in the portal, make sure it has that box check for deal registration approved. You're good to go, right? Either you don't have to upload anything, but maybe that registration gets challenged. That is when you'll need to upload something. Um, Ryan, I, I would just add that, and it's again, because this happens, I think a little more in federal than elsewhere. Occasionally, the tool allows an approval 
when there is another partner approved. And we do periodically kind of look for those mistakes. It's really a mistake by the tool. And in that case, we will reverse a deal reg, but we, you know, a second approval, but we we're, we're usually pretty quick about it. And, you know, so you're not going on and on thinking that you've got a reg when you really don't, but occasionally that will happen. And we do maintain the right to do that if we notice a blatant right. miss by the tool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Connie, I, I see your your question there that you run into issues of GOE being marked when it shouldn't be. I have seen that as well myself. Uh, there's human beings that create these customers in the system, and sometimes they'll either mark it as unknown or GOE uh, by mistake. If that is the case, um, you'll you can reach out to myself or Doreen or Judy, and we'll go make sure that the Passport Advantage team that's creating this stuff, uh, these CMR numbers or site IDs, gets that correct corrected. I do agree with you. Sometimes we've seen that it can take uh, up to a week to get it changed. It's frustrating, um, but it does help when you have uh, IBM reps or TD Cynix reps in your corner to make sure that not only is it escalated in a timely manner, um, but that we try to get it to where IBM doesn't refuse to change it, right? We explain the case uh, to them directly uh, to make sure that that gets switched over. Um, at the end of the day, if they determine that uh, it's, it's going to stay GOE, there's a couple routes we can go. One, probably the quickest route is to just go ahead and upload documentation uh, that you've been working with the customer and, and we can expedite that review with the DealRx team to get it approved pretty quickly. And then we can put all that behind us. Uh, but if the route you also wanna go is no, I want this customer changed to be a private sector customer because you know we plan on doing even more business with them down the road. Uh, we can go that route. Uh, my advice is to upload the GOE docs, we'll expedite the approval, get it approved for you, and then we'll tackle getting it changed and escalating up the chain right. you know, as far as we need to, to have it reflect private sector on the next deal, Reg, if that makes sense, okay? But whenever the IBM team has the customer number created, which is done before the site is created, <clears throat> there's an indicator that says GOE or not. To Ryan's point, if you advise TD Cynix and then myself or Judy, I can submit to get that flag corrected to yes or no, depending on whether or not it is a GOE entity. But please keep in mind, there are GOE entities that you really might not think should be, but they are. And IBM is not prone to changing those right. based on a business partner's request for incentives. Right. G GOE is something that, you know, IBM sort of reserves the right to determine. So sometimes it is a blatant error, Connie, and it's obvious, but there sure. are accounts that mm -hmm. where we view them and treat them as federal accounts because of history and risk and all those kinds of things. And um, we won't, you know, we won't change those. And then again, a reminder that if you're working with an integrator and the integrator is working with the government, that really is a government deal. It's really the government that's you know, gonna take title to the equipment, gonna buy the equipment. We would absolutely treat all of those as GOE, even though there's an integrator in the middle. But we can confirm for you, if you're <clears throat> wondering why or why not it is GOE, we can absolutely confirm what the IBM system is telling right. us. Yeah, right. absolutely. And explain <laughs> it as well, if needed, Connie, just always right. call, you know, yeah. All right, I was on mute there for a second. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in just yet. Um, Doreen, you and I should reach out to Connie on one other question I was there. Just going to start responding, but we'll talk with you, Connie, because yeah. I work. <clears throat> extensively since April with CDW on New York state and city. Yeah. So <clears throat> we'll address that one uh, directly. Um, I'm not seeing anything else. I'll leave it open. Anything else uh, from the, the partner community out there or anything else from IBM before we, uh, before we look to wrap this up? Well, team, I don't see anything else coming in, so I'll, I'll ramble for a little bit here, but uh, I want to thank everybody for attending, and I hope that you found this valuable. We thought that this would be valuable for our partner community, right, because we do 
field a lot of questions about this. Ryan, Doreen, Judy, thank you guys so much. Uh, Ryan, awesome job on this as always. Um, our team is here. Uh, your, your BDE team, David Johnstone's out there. If you're, if you're working with him, um, if you're working with Ryan, whoever, we have a, a team of resources that is fully connected with, the, with our IBM counterparts and IBM team to help you guys with this stuff. So please reach out to any of us when this comes up and we'll get you corrected with the right folks. We wanna make sure that you guys are making all the money that you can make and positioning yourselves to win and be successful uh, in the public sector out there in, uh, in IBM uh, solution land. So um, I don't see anything else uh, coming in. A couple of thank yous, but again, thank you for joining. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll send out uh, the follow on and, and follow ups to this call, you know, in the next couple of days. So look forward to that. But thank you again for attending.